Okay, everyone. It seems that we are live. Well, this is quite a bit of a change of scenery. Um, I've decided to do an impromptu kind of a stream today because I've been playing around with uh, API management and Azure and .NET APIs and obviously Azure AD. So I was thinking, uh, what is best other than actually show how I did it? Now, um, in case you haven't used API management before, it's a fantastic tool because it allows you to uh, to go and build some uh, security. It allows you to do throttling. It allows you to do quite a few different things on your um, on your APIs that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So it is a fantastic tool. If you haven't used it before, uh, we can go and have a look at the API management box here. So let's see, Azure API management, it is a great tool. I've used in the past, it has evolved quite a bit in its capabilities and also in terms of costing because uh, one of the issues that a lot of people had before with API management was the actual cost, especially the, the basic. I mean, it used to be quite expensive and uh, people would stay away from it now with uh, with a consumption model, you get a more lightweight, faster uh, deployment of API management and allows you to actually achieve quite a few things, but there are uh, certain limitations when you use the consumption model. So be aware that if you are using that, you're probably missing things like uh, custom domain names, uh, Azure Active Directory integration for the developer portal. That's for the developer portal, not for the actual API security and what have you. So, um, Check, make sure that you uh, you use the right model. Uh, if you are starting, I would say start with the developer, see what uh, what's happening, what you can do, but be aware that there's no SLA for the developer model. So if you are going to go into production, then you need to choose the right one. There's also an isolated one for specific enterprises. So uh, quite a bit of a range of services there. Now, because it takes quite a bit of time to actually deploy an API management, uh, I'm going to kick it off straight away. So if we go into API management, we'll add a new one. Uh, it does actually take quite a bit of time to deploy, maybe uh, 30 to 20 to 30 minutes because it deploys resources and stuff. So just so you're aware, we're gonna uh, add a new one now. And while we're talking and building our API, the API management behind the scenes is going to deploy for us. GK South, I don't know why it defaults to GK South. I mean, it used to be in the UK. Let's go West US, resource name. Let's do CM Stream API. Uh, organization doesn't matter. Let's put Microsoft. And my email. That is required because if you are setting your own account later, or if you need to have an account that actually does everything for you, um, this is required. It will also send emails to uh, your account. Uh, like it's been set up or you're ready to go or there are some issues. So make sure you uh, use a, an actual administrator email account or a good one. I'm going to use my work one. And uh, we can go with, uh, let's say basic. See, different SLAs. Obviously, as I said, developer does not have an SLA. And if we need to uh, refer back to the functionality, there's a, a small cost for the developer one, but uh, you get some basic things like caching, scaling out. We don't need that. No SLA, it's okay. Isolation is private. You notice that the consumption is actually shared resources. We don't have any usage limits. And uh, yeah, I mean, the developer one is okay. We can start with that or yeah, let's do developer. It just let us know. Uh, we don't need any monitoring. Uh, but it, it ties nicely with application insights. So app insights, if you want to use that one, project image, super grainy. Oh no, why? Damn it. Thank you, H3 Tech. I don't know why, is it my upstream? I don't know. Let's see, is there anything I can change here to make it more uh, quality wise? Am I even buffering both Android TV and Chrome casted? What about the YouTube one? Is it still showing bad on YouTube? 
aka aka dot ms fortified show. Yeah, you might have to help thank Comcast for that. Uh, home. So let me see. Yeah, you're right. Even on, even on, even on YouTube, it's green, isn't it? it? Sucks. I, I'm pretty sure that it has to do with my upload speeds. Hey, Cold was on. Good morning. That should be slightly better now. I think I can see better. Maybe my resolution was it was awful. Okay, I'll try to stay zoomed in so you guys can see stuff. Anyway, for those ones that joined this morning, thanks for joining. I am covering API management with uh, Azure AD and APIs. So we'll create a .NET Core API. We'll upload it to Azure, and then we're going to uh, we're going to stick API management in front of that, just to cover the scenarios where uh, usually you have a, an older API that does not have security or it has you know bad security maybe, and what you want to do, like um, uh, uses uh, a username and password to authenticate, right? So and in that instance, you don't want to use that, especially when you go public. So API management is going to, to solve that for us. So the, the front end is going to, whatever the front end is, if I, I was thinking maybe building a, a console app. So the front end will authenticate with uh, Azure AD, will acquire the token, and it will call the API management. The API management will do the authentication for us, and then it will pass the, the request downstream to the API behind the scenes. So that's the plan for today. And I was just about to deploy the API management component. So I will review and create. And as I said, it takes a significant amount of time to deploy, uh, to deploy an API management. So if we see that it takes too long, I already have one in place. We can go and actually use that one. So let me maximize this. So we are at the point that the API Management is deploying. We looked at the cost a little bit plus SLAs. So if you've never uh, worked with API management before, just be aware that the, there are different tiers. Uh, there's a consumption one now that is faster to deploy, but it doesn't have the same kind of functionality as everything else. And uh, we're using the developer one for now. If you are going to production, you don't want to use a developer because there are no SLAs. So it comes with significant risk. And it's also cheaper. So if you are a developer and you want to play with things around, uh, you can actually use the, the developer version. Uh, one of the things that I was looking at is also the estimated maximum throughput. That's very important. How long does it usually take to create one? Uh, it takes about uh, 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah, I, I don't know why. I was hoping that they would have fixed that and it would be easier and faster to deploy them. Maybe the consumption one is much faster, but... Uh, um, I haven't tried it, so I don't know what the actual time is. But yeah, it, it's the, it takes that long to deploy things. So okay, we have the API management deploying. Now we need an API to work with. So for that, uh, we're going to uh, do a file new project. So let's open our terminal. And then we will walk through the process of actually securing the, uh, the API management with Azure AD. So that's the, the interesting bit. We're, we're going to create a, a DAM or a non-intelligent, non-secure API, uh, trying to uh, to almost imitate the scenario where you have an older API that doesn't have any security and you want to secure with uh, API management. That's one of the main reasons that the API management is used. Other reasons are throughput, monetization, uh, self-registration, and what have you. So we will do .NET. That's amazing. I can build 20 VMs plus network, et cetera, in less than 10 minutes. I know, I know. Um, there are certain things on Azure that take a significant amount of time. I really don't know why it takes so long to spin up a, an API management, but um, a few years ago, I was working with a customer uh, and they were gung-ho on using 
RPG, which I think uh, had just been acquired, so maybe three years ago. RPG is a Google-owned uh, API management tool. And uh, this customer wanted to deploy RPG on Azure and then secure APIs behind that. And it turns out that for RPG, they needed something like 36 uh, different VMs for one plane. So if you say, I want a developer, a QA, and a production environment, that's 36 VMs times three. Yes, I know. And uh, I was like, why the hell are they going to use RPG? Uh, th that was the decision. So I don't know if uh, API management has a number of VMs and configurations that happen behind the scenes. Um, and I really haven't looked into that. I don't really know the underlying technologies. So it could be the case that we're spinning up, I don't know, maybe 10 VMs, uh, one demands the databases and infrastructure. It is a complex uh, setup, but to the front end developer, or the, the admin of the app, uh, API management, it shouldn't look that complex. Yeah, uh, for Azure type, just build AKS behind the scenes, much less time. Yeah, I know, you could use AKS, you could use other tools. Uh, they could be using things like Service Fabric, I guess, because behind the scenes, a lot of infrastructure on Azure still relies on uh, Service Fabric. I don't know why, but uh, it does take a significant amount of time. So uh, there you go, the deployment is, is in progress. Let's go and create our uh, app. So here I have my console. So obviously I don't want to do .NET there. Uh, CD projects, I think, there you go. And then here we can do .NET new API. Hope everybody can see that, make, make it bigger. My API and then get a name, API demo. So this is just going to create a, a very, yeah, even service fabric doesn't take 30 minutes to build. I know, I know. Uh, let's, let's, I mean, I haven't really spoken to the API management folks for some time now, so I have no idea uh, what happens with the product, but uh, it, it is one of these things I haven't touched in a while. I don't know why it takes so long. We can find out at some point, I guess. So we have our API. Let's uh, let's change directly into that API demo, and then here we're going to open it with code. I'm going to make my code big, so everybody can see it. I don't know why it was green in the beginning. I hope that it speaks for everyone. I can see on the stream that it looks okay. What do we have here? We have our startup. It's an API. There is no security. Yeah, okay, so there's also the Swagger, which is nice. Uh, yeah, thanks for following Daniel Monetelli. This morning we're building an API management and API, and we're going to secure our access to the API via Azure AD. The Azure AD is going to be configured on the API management bit, so the API doesn't have to know about security whatsoever. And there are different scenarios here as well. I haven't covered them, but um, you could also have a pass-through authentication where the API management does some routing or some throttling or some caching, and then it passes the authorization header downstream to the API, so the API can do some uh, clever manipulation or some authorization or some extra checks. You can also do both. You can have your API management uh, validating the token and then also passing it down to the API to also validate the token. So it's not a... a an or, it's, a, it's an and and an or, right? You can have both. Uh, so the, the this is just a standard API that we do build here. Uh, and it doesn't have any security whatsoever. It only has one controller, which is the weather forecast controller, uh, super unintelligent. It also doesn't have anything other than a get method. So if we were to run this one, which we're gonna do in a second, new terminal, let's do .NET run. So it's building and it should run in a second. There you go, we're good to go. It's listening at port 5001. And if I go to my browser, <coughs> I can say localhost 5001. I have it here and then it should be weather forecast. Uh, empty response. Is it weather forecast? What am I? Oops. So it should be weather forecast API. Yeah, that should be the one. 
Did I mistype it? Weather forecasts. It's interesting because I was working on Friday. Should be just a get on the weather forecast. Maybe I mistyped it. It is definitely running. Huh. Localhost did not send in data. Ah, that's interesting. That is very interesting. Question, what theme am I using for VS Code? Yeah, thanks. Uh, let me sidetrack and go into my theme. Uh, preferences and then I have uh, an extension called bearded theme because of the beard see uh, which is an extension you can install it and right now I think I'm using the black and amethyst uh, uh, theme it's not as good as my partners JP who uh, who is stream usually on Monday and Friday so um, the most people ask for his theme rather than my theme but thanks for asking uh, I hope it helps. Now uh, let's let's figure out why the API is not working. Should be absolutely fine. There's nothing really interesting here to do other than hit the weather forecast controller. <coughs> There's no API e even, so let's just check the route so we make sure that everything is okay. Uh, so if I go back to my startup, it's only when you stream that things don't work, right? Yeah, I mean there's no uh, there's no path here. Everything should be working as expected. There's yes in the front just in case, but I doubt that. Ah, ah, damn it. Okay, so <laughs> that explains it. It was trying to go to uh, HTTP. I thought it had a redirect to HTTPS, but ah, you know what? It doesn't have a redirect because there's no UI. So um, it's, it has HTTPS. You, use HTTPS redirection, but it did not redirect for me. Hey, thanks for following uh, Panninger. Panninger? Panninger? Sorry, I don't know what the answer should be. So Panning, Panninger, Punisher. OK, so we have our API working. We know it's working locally. We can get the data from the endpoint. Make sure you use HTTPS in the front, um, and we can get our data. Now, the next step is to publish this API onto Azure uh, so we can actually protect it with uh, the API management component. Uh, obviously, that is one way to do it. You don't always have to deploy to Azure. This API can run anywhere. It could be on premises, and as long as it can be accessible via the internet, we could secure it uh, via API management. It could be running on AWS. It could be running on Google Cloud. It could be running on some other data center. So technically, we could spin up Ngrok and have it run locally, and it will still be protected or can be protected by uh, by Azure API management. Let's see how that is going, by the way. The deployment should be going strong. Let's see where we are. Deployment still going. It started at, let's say, 9.09, and the time is, we're 11 minutes in, so we're going strong in the container. <laughs> Yeah, could be. Yeah, it could be running in a container. It could be running inside AKS. It could be running anywhere, as long as it is accessible via um, via the internet. It can be protected. So while we're doing that, let's go and deploy our API management. There are different ways to do that. There there are a lot of ways to do that. Obviously, uh, there's not just one way to do that. So right now, I'm going to use the Azure extension inside VS Code to deploy my API into uh, an app service on Azure. And we can spin up a new one. So you'll see, uh, oh, it doesn't, doesn't remember that I'm authenticated. So let's authenticate again. I will use my, my proper Microsoft uh, account. So it's going to deploy to the Microsoft tenant. And here we are, quite a few services there. I don't want a function. And I'm going to use my CM internal. Notice I have another here. So what we're going to do is say, create a new web app. I don't want any settings, to be honest. Like, I don't want anything uh, 
anything special here. We're, what we're going to do is just um, do the default one. So click, right click, uh, create new web app. It will ask us a few questions. Remember the name of the web app needs to be unique. So CM stream API. It will say, what kind of runtime do you want to use? Uh, it's nice because uh, in, in the early days of .NET, like two months ago, you had to actually go and spin up a .NET 5 website via the portal. That's now uh, not the case. You can do it via the tooling as well. And off it goes. You can see down here. Can you see down here? Uh, you can see. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you can see down here that it's creating our um, web app. So that's spinning up the resources so I can go and deploy my API. Let's go and check our API management deployment, which I'm pretty sure is still going strong. There you go. Still deploying, but it's fine. We're not in a rush because as soon as we deploy our app, the next step will be uh, to go to the docs and look at how we can add Azure AD authentication to our app. It can be Azure AD, it can be B2C as well, so it doesn't have to be just Azure AD, but this, this instance we're using Azure AD. The deployment is done. Oh, check this out. It says, do you want to deploy your app? That's so clever, isn't it? Okay, I want to deploy the app. Yes, please. Uh, deploy. It says, which app do you want to use? I want to use the current one. But you can also choose a different one if you want to. So you don't have to just select the current project. Maybe you have a required configuration deploy is missing. It's guiding me through the process. Yes, let's add the config. And now it's running the deployment task. You can see down here that it is doing it for us. Always deploy to this workspace. Yes, why not? I mean, right-click deploy should not be the way to go. Don't get me wrong. But now that we are just testing things, it's always nice to do click, click, click and move on to the next task rather than setting up a pipeline. Uh, I, was, I was checking the other day. I think Tim Hoyer uh, from the .NET team actually added um, a functionality to do .NET new deployment pipeline or something like that. So uh, you don't have to go and do it on GitHub manually. I have to look into that, by the way, because it would be nice to do it via the CLI and not just the UI. I can actually browse into it now. So if I say, take me to the website, yeah, we're on the stream, right? So browse the website. Yes, I want to open the page. Obviously, it's not going to take us anywhere because there's no UI here, but why are you not using chroma key? I don't know. Yeah, I'm using Restream, so I'm not on my OBS. I know, I know. You can superimpose anything you want behind me. I won't be offended. I should be using chroma key. Does Restream provide chroma key? I don't think it does. I was looking at the settings and I couldn't find anything. So it has to go through OBS and I couldn't be bothered because it's a new machine. So at some point I will, I will install OBS, I promise. And I will make sure that I'm proper and I do my streams properly. Uh, this is this was just a test to see if uh, anybody will tune in and if I can actually stream by myself without JP uh, on the other side of the window talking to me. Right, we have the website running, but thanks code. <laughs> code was wrong, I know, I know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not perfect, I will, I will get there uh, eventually. Hopefully the content counts more than me being on an ice cream. <laughs> thanks for the encouragement. I will take that back to my manager. All right, okay, so we have the website deployed. Obviously, it's a, it's a web API. It's a web API, so it doesn't have a UI. We need to hit it via the endpoint. And if you remember, the endpoint was weather forecast. So if I say weather forecast, and you can't see it because I'm pretty sure it's tiny. Boom, right. So that proves that the API is working, and we got some data back. Look at that, it's a beauty. Uh, random temperatures. What's the, what's the weather like uh, on your side? Did you hear? It was snowing in Texas this morning. Among other things that are happening in uh, 2021, we are, we are getting snow in Texas. I always thought Texas was dry and hot. But anyway, snow. Uh, in Seattle this morning, the weather is uh, slightly rainy, cloudy, and uh, chilly. But you know what? Uh, it will, I had a nice window of good weather yesterday. I would say good. It was freezing but it was nice and sunny. Yeah, West Texas, not surprising. Um, so it was freezing, but it was dry. So uh, we took the Christmas decorations down. And by that, I mean, I had to go out in the front yard and take all the lights down. And because they were wet, my hands were 
frozen stiff because it was wet and cold. And as I was touching things, I also had I put some tape around the connecting cables and what have you. So I was like trying to, it was also almost working with uh, three layers of gloves, trying to touch things and do stuff. But anyway, we took the Christmas decorations down and I feel very proud about the fact that we did it in half a day. We're getting better. Right, our API is up and running. Oh, don't remind me. I have to take the decorations down. Yeah. Uh, chicks can code, I think. Yeah, chicks can code. I feel your pain. We were dreading about that, but uh, luckily we had our girls um, help us. So we have a nine-year-old and a six-year-old, and we're super excited about helping out with the, the whole endeavor. So they went and took everything around the house and brought them in one place, and then my wife was putting them into the boxes, and I was putting the boxes back in the cells. So it was good. Ah, snowing in Dallas as well, Code with Son saying. Yeah, but I am getting snow not getting in snow, four and a half hours north of Dallas. Ooh, nice. I mean, you're not getting snow. I don't know. Is it a good thing to have snow or, or a bad thing? And I think the kids love it. I love it as well. But then uh, after a few days, it becomes a hustle. Or it used to anyway. I don't go anywhere these days, so it might as well snow. I don't really care. Uh, we don't commute to work anymore, so I don't think that's a problem. I hope you guys are not commuting and still staying safe with uh, everything. Has anyone on the stream had the uh, the job yet? <clears throat> COVID? No? Do you know when you're getting it? I have no idea. You know, it could be. I'm thinking. I'm thinking summer. I think if we if we're lucky enough, we'll get in the summer. All right. Let's see. API management. Snow is fine, but it can cause road issues for those on the roads. Yeah. Ooh, your daughter is an EMT. <laughs> yes, that can be a challenge. Oh. Is it still deploying? Deployment in process. I, I, I hit that one. I was like, oh, it's done. No, it's not. They will love our feedback. So we say, uh, make it work faster. <laughs> we could do that, right? Although I don't know if it's going to be good coming from me since I work at Microsoft. Internal feedback is always more um, valued, I suppose. But let us know if you are using API management. Um, let us know if you like it, if you don't like it, and what the problems are. Right. We have our um, app up and running so uh, before we get the there's the deployment cooking show demo for apim Ooh, yes nice i'm curious now okay the api is up and running on azure uh, we don't have the api management in place yet so while that's happening i thought it might be a good idea for us to go and look into yeah i have one ready in advance I mean, we could jump into that. Do you guys want to do that? I'm more than happy to, since I show you how you deploy it, it's not really a lot of magic. We can jump into the existing API management and do that, right? Although I was going to set up um, Azure AD and that's, that has already been set up on the, on the other one. So that is a little bit of an issue if I want to demo it. But since we have to look at the docs anyway, I can do that. I should have done it last night. I was thinking maybe I should deploy that last night and then use that one. Lesson for next time. OK, let's go into the docs. So um, uh, what I would be looking for, and I don't know how you would do the search, but it would be API Management Azure AD, or Secure API Management with Azure AD, with Azure AD. OK, what do we have here? We have uh, a few answers. Can compare. I don't want to compare. Uh, secure an API management API by using Azure Active Directory. Now you might think, hey, that sounds like the right one. But if you open this, it actually takes you to the B2C settings, which was super weird. I mean, I don't mind using B2C, but I would have expected that the Azure AD would be the first result to come back. So um, obviously, in this instance, we're not using B2C, so we can skip that one. But that was the first dog that came up. And then right below that, there is a protect API backend in API management. We could obviously go through the docs, right? So if you go to the API management documentation uh, up here, then there are concepts and ideas for security. No, we don't. Like, you think it's security. It's not security. Uh, where is it? Tutorial samples. We don't want these. This is for deploying and debugging and storing. So it could be how-to guides. And then we have secure your APIs, uh, which is not the case again. This is not where the docs are. Uh, it's secure your backend. 
weirdly enough. And then it, it is protect your API with Azure AD. So this is the actual doc that we need uh, to work with uh, Azure AD. And what do we need for that? We need an Azure AD tenant. My camera has gone out of, uh, there you go. Um, what do you need for that? You need an Azure AD tenant. Very important. Uh, if you are going to use an Azure AD tenant, you need to use one that you have admin permissions because uh, you need to consent to settings. And you can do that if you use a corporate one that you don't have admin permissions to do consent. So be aware, uh, use one that uh, it does not require that. And I have already one. If you don't have one, you can get, uh, I'll put the link, it's aka.ms, uh, 425, so M365 free, I think. Uh, and we can always double check that. Let me uh, let me check the link. Or you can always look for MT65 developer program, but uh, we have a link ready for you, so you don't have to do the search. Uh, 425, so I'm looking at the list of links that we have. It's free M365. So see, I was uh, taking you down the wrong path. Free M365. Free M365. And you can get a free m 65 developer account that allows you to go and set up your Azure AD tenant. It allows you to uh, get graph data, OneDrive data, sample data, accounts, test accounts. And you can use that to learn and get up to speed with uh, a lot of things without requiring you to ping your admin every single time and say, I need consent for this, I need consent for that, and what have you. So we, uh, I already have an Azure AD tenant uh, in the m 65 developer account, which we're going to be using today. So the first thing that we need to do is look at the documentation and decide how this needs to be set up. So first and foremost, we need to register an application in the backend. For the backend, we need to register another application for the client app uh, to represent the client application that needs to call the API. Uh, you need to grant permissions. That's the one I said, you need to have permissions so you can grant them. Uh, you need to configure the developer console to uh, call the API using OAuth2 user authentication and add the validity uh, or validate the token, right? Validate JWT policy to validate the OAuth token for every incoming request. So not only do you have a present JWT token, but also we need to validate that. I skipped that step the other day. I did not do my validation. Okay, so we can do it today. Let's go go to the Azure portal, to the Azure portal and back. So for that, because we're going to be doing things side by side, I'm going to stick this on one side and I'm going to take another browser and go to, how's our deployment going? That's my old one, isn't it? King. Notifications. Deployment in progress, still going strong. See, I told you it's gonna take a while. So in the meantime, let's jump into my Azure AD. No. Uh, what do I want? I want, oh yeah, you know what? We can do it through here, sorry. I forgot about that. We can switch to my testament and it is going to be white. Uh, why did this expand to the full screen? Is it because I'm zoomed in? There you go. Okay, perfect. So one side we have the instructions, on the other side we have the setup. So here, uh, we're going to our test and Azure AD, and then we need to create a new app registration. Go to the Azure portal, new registration. Let's do that, app registration. Uh, it will say uh, register an app, give it a name, uh, backend app, and, or like backend app. And it can be any support types, uh, it's, it's, it can be any. Select an option that suits your scenario. Okay, let's go new app registration. So we can say API M stream backend. I'm going to go with accounts in my organization only. Zooming in because it is grainy. Still grainy? There you go, that should be better now. 
I'm not going to put a redirect URI down here for now. Leave the redirect URI section empty. So register that. And then it says, uh, on the overview page, uh, get the client ID and record it for later. So what I'm going to do is uh, copy this one. And open my notepad so we can take notes. Notepad, OneNote, whatever works for you. So we can say backend API client ID. Make it bigger. Then we need to uh, get the tenant ID. Well, I'm pretty sure we'll need it for later. Uh, and now we need to go and expose an API. So that will be adding the necessary permissions that we need. So in the expose API down here, uh, it says add a scope page, <coughs> display the add a scope. So uh, we need to set the application URI from step seven. So let's set that up. And then it says add a scope, create a new scope that is supported by the API. For example, file story, <coughs> it can be any scope. And since we're not using graph or anything else, we're just going to create a scope for the API itself. So here I'm doing an add scope. We'll name it access as user, not plus, it will be underscore. Access as user, admins and users can consent. Access the API as a user. Let's do a copy pasta for the rest of the fields down here and then we want to be enabled and add the scope and with that I'm going to copy the scope into my OneNote so it can be handy for us and use it in a bit so this is the information I have for now uh, I'm going to use a document on the side and at some point I will take it away because we need to create a client secret um, as well obviously I can roll the client secret so whatever is easier so let's do this we have everything we need. We have the scope, we added the scope, and then the scopes are created, make a note. So we've done that. So that's our backend API operating station configured inside Azure AD. Next, I'm going to create the application ID to represent the client application. Okay, let's do that. Back in the portal again, we want to create a new operating station. How do we name this one? We named it Demo API, what do we name it? I can't remember. What was the name of it? You know what? We can sort by date. API stream backend. Then we can do API um, stream client. API um, stream client. And with that, uh, what do we do next? It says name, supported account types, select accounts in any organization. I don't know. That's a little bit weird. Like, should we? I thought we we're only doing accounts in my organization. So I wonder if the client API needs to be a multi tenant app, which is the inverse of what it should be. So I'm going to keep it as accounts in my organization. If it's wrong, then we can come back and fix it later. But for now, it's there. Uh, uh, so it says that in the redirect URI, select web, but leave the URL field empty for now. So we're not going to change anything here. Select register. We're doing that. So that's the client registration. Let's copy the information. So we need a client API ID. So the client ID for that. Uh, so client reds, client ID. I'm just typing it into my trusty window. Then we need a... Uh, what did it say? Select that, add a secret. Now for that, you go into your certificates and secrets. I'm going to move it away because I don't want you to see it, but it's as simple as just clicking on the client secret down here. So let me just come here. Okay, click on the client secret. It will ask you for how long do you want it? Let's say client secret, uh, one year. Please avoid using never. Uh, it's very bad practice. And if you do one year, then you need to take a note that this application, uh, this client secret will expire because you can come across issues where the secret has expired and you're getting errors. And before I press add, I'm just going to take it away and hide it so you guys don't see that. You don't see my secrets. 
and I'm going to copy my secret and client secrets. I don't want to dox myself, right? Is that the expression? That's the expression. And I just dox myself. It's fine. I'm going to delete that one and create a new one because I am not careful. Yes, delete that one and create a new one. Client secrets. One year. I'm not going to move my <laughs> my notepad onto the screen again. Promise. Okay, we got that one. What's next? Uh, grant permissions in Azure AD. Ah, okay. That's interesting. Now we need to go back into our overview. So let me just bring my browser back into view. Uh, it says in the Azure portal, choose the client app and then uh, go to the API permissions. So we were already there. Let's, uh, let's go there again. API stream backend, API stream client. And then in the API permissions, you know, remember we uh, configured it does notify at least subscription owner of the soon to expire secret. Yes, but you as a developer, you're right, Sean, but you as a developer, you may not uh, see that. So uh, just be aware, like uh, if you're doing demos or if you're creating code or whatever that you created that, but I agree, you should get notification. Uh, so what we have here, we have API permissions. Uh, we need to, to add a new one, so add a permission. And for that, uh, we go into uh, to my API, so it says down here, select an API in my API. And then down here, we have API stream backend. That's the one that we need. Yes, we want to select the access as user under the delegated permissions and add the permission. At this point, you do need to add or grant uh, admin consent. So if you don't do that, then it's not going to work. It's going to fail. We are done. Okay, that is done. Let's see where our API management is sitting at. Did we get, uh, I need another window now, don't I? Yes, I do. Uh, I need to be here. Now my API management is sitting under my Microsoft tenant, but my Azure AD is sitting on a different tenant, my own tenant. Uh, is my API management ready yet? Oh, it is. Oh, it's still activating. Come on. Yeah, almost there. What is it saying? Activating. Might take a couple more seconds for that to work. But it does not stop us from actually configuring our API management. That's great. So we can go ahead and do it. So the next thing that we have to do now that we have the Azure AD component done, we need to go and configure our API management uh, to actually use Azure AD for authentication. So let's snap them again to the side. Don't know how that's gonna work. Uh, okay, what do we need to do? Enable OAuth2 user authentication in the developer console. At this point, you have created the applications in the Azure AD, grant permissions. The developer console in, is the client app. Ah, you know what? First, we need to add the API. We haven't done that yet. So APIs, click on that. That's not the steps. Service is getting ready. Oh, come on. Come on. You can do it. Come on. You know what? We could actually jump into my demo. And then we can use that one. Just a note, the MS docs are so much better these days. I know they are a lot better. Uh, I have to agree. Although I did found a couple of gaps in the documentation. Also, uh, correct me if I'm wrong and tell me what you think, but I would have loved to have some images here that guide you through the experience. Uh, in other docs, we do have that. So when you create app registrations, there's either a script or a, an image that shows you where you need to go. Uh, yeah, I know, 99% is fantastic. Uh, but there's always uh, space for improvement, right? There's always scope for improvement. So if you find anything that is not right, be, remember that you can always, always contribute the docs. Up here, you can go uh, edit. And then if you decide to edit, then uh, it will actually spin up a new uh, uh, GitHub repo for you. And you can 
go and contribute. If you want to contribute to open source, that's a great way to do it. Just add some docs. So we are down here. We are in the space where we need to configure our OAuth2 in the portal. Let's give it one more attempt to see it's still activating. Ah, oh, God. Right. Well done, Sean. Um, uh, Code with Sean saying he has already edited a few pages last year. That's brilliant. Uh, we definitely value support. And you know, uh, as a developer, if you have stuff to contribute, and it makes it so much easier because you know exactly what's missing or what you want. Sometimes our, our docs team does not have a, a really good understanding of what developers want. Just other PCs that helped me become an MVP. Ooh, nice. When did you become an MVP? This year, last year? Uh, so we have APIs here. Now we need to add our API. And for that, we don't need to be on the split screen. And I can probably minimize a little bit here. Last July. Ah, so you're halfway through. Great. I was an MVP once for two months. The shortest lived MVP in the UK, apparently. Because I became an MVP in June, in January first. That was my uh, birthday present. And then in uh, at the end of February, I got hired by Microsoft. So I was only an MVP for two months. I can say I can like take it off my uh, uh, my bucket list, right? Okay, okay. Now we do have an API. Uh, you can see there's different options here to uh, to add uh, APIs. You can have a WSDL definition. You can have a Waddle definition. Uh, so Waddle is the open API. You also have open API. You have um, WSDL is the old WCF stuff. If you're still doubling with that, you can also add logic apps. So if your logic apps are exposing HTTP endpoints, you can add them here. And as you can see, app service and function apps are first class. So you don't really have to define uh, an open API. Even even our even though our API itself, the .NET code, the .NET Core code comes with a Swagger definition, we don't need to use that one. We can directly point to an app service, and um, it will be intelligent enough to work it out. So app service then here it says select the app service let's browse to that we already have the one for the stream from today let's use this uh, display name yeah we can keep it as stream api uh same name here url prefix we don't need a prefix we're good there and let's go and create that so before we even add uh, one more fields uh, what url suffix there. Is that enough? Ooh. Cannot create at the same path as Christus API unless. Oh. Fine. I delete my previous one. Damn it. Or change the path for this one. Yeah, let's change the path for this one. Uh, front end. Is it front end? If I remember correctly. No, no, discard. What do we change? Settings. OK, it's under settings. So here, the suffix needs to be, I don't know, that's the uh, test. test. OK, so that means that if I, if I go back to add my API, I shouldn't have the same path. Uh, yeah, let's select it again. Stream API, that's the one we're doing today. Leave everything default. Will it uh, like it or it will say you're missing a suffix? It liked it this time. Ah, you know what? It didn't like it before because it was the same path as the previous one. Oh, check this out. We have everything we need now. Let's, should we put it to the test? Get, we need to do a get. So the get doesn't do anything other than, uh, we need to, uh settings by the way i've noticed that if you so sorry, test i did notice in the past that because you had the star web service url should be fine here but i did notice that in the get Yeah, we need to remove the star from here. Otherwise, it fails on its face. So now we should be able to test it. 
test here and say, oh, we need to change the back end settings. It's been a while, be patient. Uh, web service URL, I think it is weather forecast. Save, didn't like that one. Save, didn't like this one either. How do we set this one up? Discard, let me go to the back one, All right? Christos API, no settings there, design, change that one. Subscription key, weather API, yes for the auth. Uh, MVPs, thanks for following. Oh, Cesar Fritz is following me. Damn, man, following us. It's a 45 show. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Jeff, today we're doing API management with Azure AD and .NET Core API. So we're at the point that we have our API management almost set up. Uh, we have our API deployed to uh, an Azure web app. And we have, we're configuring the API management now to be able to hit the uh, backend API. And then on, once we do that, we can go and configure, just not here yet. So, oh, what do you mean it's not here yet? Maybe he followed without already joining the stream. It doesn't have to be here, remember? Or maybe he is behind the scenes. Other than Elias, I don't know. Um, so this is where we are right now. I just need to remember, oh God, Cesar Free is raiding us with 113 people. Thanks for joining us. Man, that's a, a massive raid. Welcome everyone. It's awesome to have you here. Uh, what have you been working on? Damn, yes, to sign my ID, yeah. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, it is fantastic to have you here. We are working on API management and Azure AD, so securing or protecting your APIs using uh, API management. If you haven't used it before, then you join at the right point. Oh, we were writing Azure Functions with Service Bus. Damn, that is good. I love me some Azure Functions. It's usually my uh, go-to for creating things, so you don't always have to. Uh, they're very powerful. Service Bus, though, I haven't touched Service Bus in a very long time. So, uh, man, I missed that one. Thanks for joining us. I might have to go and check your uh, your stream later on to see what you guys build. So thanks for joining us. We're just at the point where we're configuring our API to work. And uh, we have our API management set up. Well, almost. Let's see. Is it set up? API management services. Oh, it's still activating. So we spun up one this morning. What time? 9, 9, 9 9.09. And then it's still deploying. So uh, it is a little bit slow to deploy if you're doing it from scratch. Uh, and right now, we already have one that we can work with. So uh, CM Demo APIM, that's the one that we deployed before. And we're configuring our backend API so we can actually go and hit it before we add any security. And thanks for everyone for following. Marques NL, thanks for following. Uh, it's awesome to have you here. So uh, let's go and see our APIs. Let's see where we are. Uh, we have three APIs. The Echo API is just the demo one. We don't need that one. The CM Stream API is the one that we configured today. So here we are. Uh, I can't remember. I think I need to set something up because otherwise it will not work. But we can always test it. Okay. Uh, now the, the thing is that the front end is going to redirect to the back end, but the back end is not at the root. So the API is forward slash weather forecast. And I need to work out where I need to add this one. So I need to remember where that needs to be set up. So we are inside the, actually let's go to the design here, front end, back end. You know what, it's in the back end, I think. So let me uh, let me bring it here. And I think there's a way to edit that. Yes, the back end is here. Ah, yes. Uh, or is Azure Resource? Uh, and I think here we need to override, I think, and then have weather forecast. It says there's a resolution to fit the stream or zoom in. The stream looks a bit pixelated. I know, I know, I don't know why. I think it's my upload, uh, my upload stream, my upload quality. 
I only have 35 uh, megabits upload. So hopefully now you guys can see what I'm doing. Yeah, and I agree, it's pixelated. I hate Comcast uh, in other news because coming from the UK, I was super happy. Um, upload is fine. It's the downscaling to 1080 source. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Maybe watch, they have selected a different um, resolution for the downscaling, you think? Uh, or, oh, it's gained because downscaling. Okay. So I think it's super here. It's weather forecast. We'll find out very, very soon, by the way. Next time. <laughs> Next time. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking, in fact, that you have a contrast issue because the stuff with a black background is super clear. Oh, could be. Interesting. Thanks, dear Flux. You're right. It does look better when I have the, the black background. Damn, I don't want it to be super grainy. I want it to be super sharp for you guys. So I think it's weather forecast. We can save it and test it and see what happens. Uh, maybe the stuff is a bit shaky. The black background is still working. Uh, invalid service URL. So is it this one then? Invalid service URL. Does it need the full HTTP, uh, the, the full endpoint? Maybe. Let's give it the full endpoint. And we do have that one. If we go into our, is it on the other browser? Could be on this browser over here. There you go. That's the weather forecast. I'll select this one and see what happens. As I said, I haven't used, uh, so let's save it. Okay, now I think we have everything we need to run it. Uh, so I want to install the dark theme. Yeah, everybody loves dark theme. I mean, I love dark theme, but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you have to uh, to go with what the the tools are giving you. So right here, I don't even have, have a choice. My my portal is dark theme, but API management has some screens that are white. So with that, it means that if I go and test my API on the get, sorry, I'm just uh, zooming out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to send it. Send. <sighs> right, it's working. We know that it is working. We get some data back. Super grainy data, I get it, super grainy. But it is working, so that's brilliant. We have our temperature data coming from the API, which is awesome. With a little bit of uh, configuring there, I can remember what I need to set up. So that is working there. Next step is going back into our docs to see what we need to do to configure the, uh, the security. So it says, if you want to use Azure AD with API management, you need to enable OAuth2. Uh, in the developer console. We are in the developer console uh, uh, over here. So you notice that down here, there's an OAuth2 setting. And apologies for the grainy, who hit the way. Okay, so let's do it. We have our operating stations, by the way. So for those of you that have just joined us, there's a requirement further up in the docs that requires you to set up two different um, settings. Uh, one, so two different operating stations. One is for the API management itself, and then there's another one for the client. And we have registered both. We took the information from the uh, a, uh, from the Azure AD, and then um, we're in the process right now that we are going to add that information into the API management. So this is the stage that we are just now, uh, an hour into the stream. Out of curiosity. These are still activating. Is it Sunday morning and nobody wants to activate my API management? I don't know. Yeah, it is working. I know it's working, but we'll we'll use the one that I had from before. And lesson for the next team, if you have resources that are going to take for a very long time to deploy, deploy them beforehand. Um, you know, I could have done it last night, but I wanted to show you how uh, you said it. So, uh, DFLAXK is having issues with a Blazor project. Right. Sunday morning, yeah. 7 p.m. Oh, 7 p.m.? Yeah, sorry. I mean, uh, Monday morning for the, the West Coast. 
East Coast, West Coast, West Coast of the US, Pacific Northwest. Refresh the browser. Uh, it could be. Let's refresh the browser. Nah. <laughs> It was not a caching issue or whatsoever. It's still uh, activating, but it's fine. I mean, we already have an API management to work with. It's just a bummer that we don't have a brand new one that we can work on. So let's see, we have the uh, OS2 that we need to go and configure on the <clears throat> portal itself. Monday morning here in Malaysia. Good morning, Wanadza. Uh, Man, I'm awful with names. Yeah, don't distract him. <laughs> I'm not being distracted. I, I like being distracted. It's okay. Uh, no control. Oh, control F5. Control F5. You want to do a hard reset. Yeah. Welcome to those from Malaysia. That's amazing. Azure is on a, <laughs> you know what? Maybe uh, like Google, we have to unionize and get uh, our resources on Azure to unionize so we can, uh, we can see what they do. I'll do a control F5 just to prove the point there. Yeah, still activating, but it's fine. As I said, we do have an API to work with. It just means that I have to reconfigure rather than configure for the first time. You'll notice that I already have a configuration. So, uh, but it doesn't matter. We can actually configure multiple uh, authentications, okay? There's an option for an OpenID Connect, but in this instance, we are using OAuth2 because we're grabbing tokens. We're not uh, getting an access token, uh, an ID token. So whether, what I say here, give it a name. And the Azure portal go to auth2, display name and description. Display name would be uh, stream auth. I'm so unimaginative with uh, names. Uh, this one will use uh, Azure AD. OpenID Connect is great. Never done anything with it, unfortunately. Uh, well, OpenID Connect is great. You're absolutely right. It, it, it does sit on top of or is an extension to auth2. So if you are using .NET, uh, whether it's with Blazor or uh, ASP.NET, in effect, you are using OpenID Connect and OAuth2 behind the scenes. With Microsoft Addend.Web, which went uh, GA back in September, all that um, ugliness or configuration settings or whatever you have to deal with, it's hidden away uh, behind the scenes. So you're still working with them uh, under underneath the, uh, the surface, but you're not directly working with them because the the library is taking care of them. So Microsoft at end.web, we haven't used that before. Uh, it's the new way to do authentication and token management in ASP.NET 3.1 and above. So have a look at that. And uh, unless you actually have to roll out your own OpenID Connect library, which I wouldn't recommend, then uh, this is, yeah, or Microsoft at end.web. Let me put it on the link. Microsoft.identity.web. Like uh, if you search for that on GitHub and the docs, you'll find all the information you need. Anything that is runs on top, that anything that runs on top of ASP.NET Core uh, can benefit from that. That is, um, you know, web apps, APIs, gRPC, Blazor, Blazor Wasm, Blazor Server, uh, anything you want, it's there for you. Have fun. Uh, we're not using uh, any authentication library today for our API because we want our API management to take care of that. So what are we going to do here? Uh, obviously, we have the first bit. We've done the description, ID, and name in the client registration uh, page URL. Enter a placeholder. OK, let's put a placeholder. HTTP, adding Twitch or ADC to that. Yes, well, you know what? You could do uh, Azure AD BC and use Tweets as your authentication provider. It's HTTPS, it should be HTTP, HTTP, localhost. So it's a placeholder only. I think we need that one to allow us to move on to the next step. It's not actually going to be used. For authorization grant types, we want to use authorization code, which is the one that we currently have selected. Specify the authorization endpoint URL and token endpoint URLs, right? So that we need to go and grab from our other browser. Somewhere around here, we have another browser. We do indeed, uh, but I don't think I have my, oh, there you go, perfect. So if you want to find information about uh, authorization endpoints and token endpoints, the easiest way to do it is go into your app registration and then hit the endpoints at the top. And here you get both. And since we're using authorization endpoint B2, we're going to grab that and go back to our other window and put it here. 
don't have to worry about that. Uh, then it says grab the, it needs to be a post, step seven. And for step eight, copy the token endpoint. Let's go and grab that one as well. Token endpoint V2, we're using the V2 endpoint. So down here, adding that. If you are using the V1 endpoint, add a body parameter named resource. We're not using a V1 endpoint, we're using V2 endpoint. Um, Nice. I'm, I'm reading to uh, the messages from C Sharp DevOps. Uh, Jeff did it with his uh, login. Perfect. He was like five minutes from zero to hero. Nice. See, if he was using Microsoft Dent Web, it's awesome. If you're using B2C, it is also awesome to integrate. You don't want to roll out your own authentication. I mean, you could. I don't know why you want to do that. And yeah, you can replace any provider. It can be Twitch or anything else. Uh, by the way, Sven Vandenbrand. Vandenbrand. I think I pronounced that. Okay. Sven Vandenbrand. Thanks for following, my friend. Um, we are building API management with Azure AD and uh, backend API. So we're at the point that we're actually configuring the OS2, the authentication on the API management. So let's see how that goes. Uh, okay, if you are using V2 endpoints, use the scope you created in the backend API as the default scope. Where are our scopes? Scopes, scopes, ah, default scope. Remember, we store that information when we're creating the scope. So here, in a separate uh, screen, I have my uh, endpoint. Uh, the default scope is this one. Now, if, you're, if you forget to take note of that or you have no idea, how to do it if we go back into our API management. Sorry, if we go back to the Azure AD um, space, and if I go into my uh, API permissions, uh, you notice that we have the the, uh, the actual permission for the API operating system we configured before. And if I click on that, it actually opens. And I can just copy that one, which I had already done. And by copying that, I can go and paste it back into our API management. So we are, where are we? Here, here. Okay, we've done that. What's next? Uh, ooh, access token accepted version. Make sure to set the value for access token accepted version property to two in your application manifest. Bam, bam, bam. That is very important. You don't want to miss this one. So how do we configure this? in your API, in your app registration under manifest, there's an access token accepted version. Uh, ABS Day guy, thanks for joining us this morning and uh, you're welcome. Thanks for uh, tuning in on a Sunday morning afternoon or Monday morning, whatever your time zone is. Uh, you can catch the, the offline uh, content if you have to go and drop off. Uh, everything will be on YouTube, so you can catch it there. Right. Um, back to our tokens by default right now which really annoys me um the manifest or the app registration manifest will be set to null which is the same as saying i'm going to be using the v1 uh, tokens so we don't want v1 tokens we want v2 and to tokens so we'll change that to two let's save that and we also need to go and change the api Stream API or the backend. Let's change the backend, which I think uh, should come down here again. The manifest, it's also null. Change that to be access token accepted. Save. Done and done. Right. So let's go back to our API management. Client credentials, Ooh, important. Next, specify the client credentials. These are the credentials for the client app. That is correct. We have a client app. Uh, so here I am going to paste my client ID and then I'm going to take the screen offline so I can paste the client secret so I do not dox myself. Uh, you know what? I think I can paste that without compromising myself. Can I? Yes. Thank you, API management. <laughs> okay. We have the secret. I'm not going to press so. Uh, Authorization code flows. Uh, we have this here. 
we are using the authorization code flow, not the implicit grant flow for now. Uh, resource owner, password credentials, we don't need these. Uh, client ID, client secret, we've done this. Uh, URL, make sure to note this URL. Oh, we need to note them. Oh yes, we do need to know that because we need to go back to our uh, app registration and fix it. So it says, make note of that. I'll put it on my uh, trusty notepad, OneNote, whatever you want to use. And uh, select create. Oh, there you go. We're creating that. Stream auth. That's the one with a nice description. Now I have to go back to the client app. Christos, mind if I pause the link to the user group meeting you and JP are speaking at this Thursday? Yeah, man, absolutely. We are joining you this Thursday, right? Really looking forward to it. Uh, feel free to share that. And uh, we we'll look forward to you actually uh, joining you. Right, we are at the point that we have configured the OS2. We need to go back into our app registration and fix the last setting. Uh, Okie dokie. So that is back into our uh, browser here. Uh, need to go back to the client app, not the API uh, registration, but the client at uh, the front end. And here under authentication, remember we left the URL empty. It doesn't remember. So it needs to be a web. Under platform, select web. And then in the redirect URI, put the one that we just copied from uh, this. So what this one will do is say when the request comes in, the response from Azure AD needs to go somewhere. The response is that endpoint uh, that we just put here. So the request comes in, Azure AD authenticates that, Azure AD is happy with it, now it needs to send back the tokens. So here, that's the URL that we need to use. Let's save this one, so configure. So it says now that you have configured all of two, the, the developer console can obtain access tokens from Azure AD. Nice. The next step is to enable uh, OAuth 2 user authentication for your API. That is correct. We've configured the authentication. We haven't added to our API yet. So let's go back to our portal. To do that, you need to uh, browse to your APIs. Back to our APIs. We have the Stream API and we have the Christus API. We're going to be using this one. Uh, you need to. Uh, well, it says select Echo API. We could do that, Echo API. But we're going to use the Echo API just to prove that things are working right. And then we're going to uh, to go into the other one. Go to settings. And then under here, you'll notice that there's a section for uh, security. Uh, you'll notice that it already says OAuth 2. That's because I've used it before or I configured it before. But uh, in this instance, uh, if you were doing it from scratch or if it was the first time, it would say none. So we need to change it to OAuth 2. And then from here, it says, what kind of authentication do you want to select? Remember, we can have multiple. We can have an OAuth 2. We can have some custom one. Uh, so uh, since in this instance, we have already configured it, let's go and add the stream auth. That's from today. Uh, and uh, under security settings, security all of two, and save, save. It says successfully call the API from the developer portal. Uh, this section does not apply to the consumption tier because the developer portal does not have um, an endpoint. Okay, so what is the developer portal? The developer portal is uh, here. So API management comes with uh, a, a developer portal as well that allows you to configure things. It actually sets up a whole new website. Maybe that's why it's taking forever to deploy. I don't know. Maybe it's setting up SharePoint behind the scenes. Uh, please don't take my word for that. And the developer portal uh, opens, a, it, it's it's almost like, a, it's like a, a, a website that you can log in. You can provide that website to your customers as well, so they can come and register themselves and be able to access that. Uh, and it's a whole base there. So you can definitely go and configure things. You can change the look and feel. You can customize it to be totally branded to your enterprise. Uh, as I said, it's very, very powerful. What is really annoying is 
that when you browse to the developer portal, if you come from uh, Azure AD, sorry, if you come from the Azure portal to the API management portal, it actually thinks that you are an admin and wants you to edit the page. And I have no idea how to come out from this one. Honestly, it was a pain in the backside. So the only way I found that you can uh, use it as a user is to open it in uh, in a private window. So let's open that in a private window. It's private here. Signing in. I need to sign in anyway. So you, you'll see that it's not uh, it's not interactive anymore, right? So I don't I can't change anything. I need to sign in. Ah, signing. It's been a pain, right? Uh, last week when I was looking into that, apparently there's a way to enable Azure AD authentication to the, the, the portal. So you could have internal users signing in with their Azure account. But what I found out is that it doesn't really work. For some weird reason, it fails to authenticate me. So let's try it today. If it doesn't work, we have a backup account and I will show you how to set it up. So see, sorry, it's Christos. Christos at. Maybe I know why I can't, but give me a second. Maybe I was being a Muppet the other day, Microsoft.com. So I try to sign in here. I will use my test, my password. 102. Oh, you know what? It's not. I need to uh, open my password manager because I don't remember it. So it should be. Please use your password managers. Sign in. Will it sign me now? Oh, I'm getting a two factor authentication. I'm going to, uh, to get it on my phone. It has arrived. Four five nine five one zero. Ah, authentication failed. Hey, thank you for following the written. Uh, let me try with my domain account. I wonder if uh, you hit our limit. Okay, try signing shortly. More information. No, I don't want that. Cancel. Use another account. I use my corporate account. I don't know if that's the case. See. Microsoft. Next. Uh, other ways to sign in. Here's my password. It's using hello, hello, hello. Yes. So it's interesting that it doesn't let me do it that. So for some weird reason, the Azure AD authentication for the developer portal does not work. And since it doesn't work, I have a fallback. Uh, I went back into my portal here. There's a users section and you can configure uh, users. So you know that the administrator is the, one, is the one that we added when we're deploying the app registration. And I'm going to use my backup account, which is also an admin, I think, to the, uh, or developer. So let's go back here. Not that one. Let's go back to our portal. And I will use this and then my password. We're in. What are we testing here? We need to go to our APIs. <laughs> and from here, uh, we can uh, test the Echo API. The nice thing is that it will prompt me for an authentication when I need to call it. So I don't have to. Uh, yeah, thanks, Sean. Uh, it's been a, a round trip. I need to really find out why the Azure AD authentication does not work for the developer portal, uh, if I'm doing something wrong or if these, there's a bug. But uh, that was a little bit annoying. Uh, and then I want to do a get. And for that to work, I need to probably maximize that so everybody can see it. Oh, no, that's not the one. This is the one. Right here, make it big. There's a try it button. Try it. Let's try it. Try. The first thing that you must oh subscription key. Yes. Uh, on top of everything else, the API management also requires a subscription key. Assuming that um, giving access to people uh, means that they need to be part of the, the product or set of products. 
And for that to work, they need to somehow identify which tier of your APIs they're using. That's why we said there's monetization. It's great, but it also means that I, nobody can use it unless they have a subscription key, which is great because API management is a public endpoint. So you don't want anybody to come and hit and hammer your API. So by providing a subscription key, it means that I can uh, secure things even further. So let's see. Uh, let me go and grab the subscription key, which is on the portal itself. So here, under subscriptions, there are keys. And from here, I want to uh, grab them. So I don't want you to see them. Don't want you to see my keys. And there's a way to show them. Show hide keys, yes. And then I can copy them. Uh, I can actually maybe show you how that works in case you're wondering without really doxing myself. So if I bring it back here, uh, in this page, uh, I have my keys, you can't see them all, but if you go all the way to the side, there's the ellipses and then under the ellipses, you can do show hide keys. Now it allows you to grab the information for your keys. And that's what I'm doing just now. I think I grabbed it. It has a primary and secondary keys and you can roll your keys anytime you want. Just be aware that this would break things for you. There, uh, doesn't have anything. You probably saw it. I will have to roll the key anyway. I couldn't avoid it. But I think I can do a sand. Uh, it did work. Did we not have authentication here? Uh, we did add authentication to the get, didn't we? That's interesting. Because it should have asked me for uh, authentication when I was testing it. Let me go back to my API management, make sure that we added the right thing and that we saved it as well. Maybe I did the changes and I didn't save it. Okay. It's fine. I will roll the keys later on. So look at them as much as you want. Uh, let's go. APIs. It was in the APIs. Then under Echo API, we did configure the security, right? It was down here. Subscription key. OAuth, stream auth, overhead scope. And save. Interesting. I don't know why it did not prompt me for security. Let's go stream API. I'll do the same here as well. I uh, see you might not want to use a subscription. So that was optional. Let's let's leave it there for now. Uh, all of two, let's select the stream off and save that. That should be all we need. So if we go back into our test portal, let's select a different API. Ah, oh, you know what? We need to add it. Yes. Uh, so we have added the API in the portal. We haven't added it to the products. Uh, to, in order for uh, the API to be exposed to our end users, in, they need to be part of a product family and there are predefined products and by product i mean it is a, a it's a way to package the api so you can expose it so somebody might say you know what i want to subscribe to product x which is a test and then i can only get five queries a day but my uh, as a test or let's say 100 queries a day but when they're happy with the api and the usage they can say i want to uh, upgrade to the business tier and that allows you to start monetizing and what have you so uh, there is a notion of products in api management and right now we have a starter and unlimited and i can uh is it under apis or do i do it here starter starter no i don't want to do that i think i need to add it to the products so it should be under apis maybe so my stream api and this Yes, I think down here, we need to add the product. There you go. So for it to be exposed, we need to add the products. Let's add it to both. And let's save again. So with this information, we should have the, the, the authentication configured. We should have the, uh, the products configured. And we need to require a subscription key and all to for... Um, for authentication against our stream auth that we just configured. Okay, let's go back to the developer portal and see what we uh, what we get. 
So we need to refresh probably to get all the APIs. Let's see, echo. Ah, there you go. There it is. Hey, thanks for following Gromit. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, we're doing API management with Azure AD and, uh, and .NET Core APIs. Stream API get. Will this work? Let's find out. Subscription key. I think I still have it pasted there. There you go. Two hundred. Okay, we got the response back. Interesting. You should have prompted me for authentication. Let me check the uh, the one I was working last time. I don't want to. I want to get. Try it. Oh, it's, God damn it. Forgot about that. Yeah, let's go back. Duh. Right, Chris. It's I know it's early in the morning, but you need to get up. You need to wake up. Right. The reason why. Oh. Oh. Authorization. Subscription key only. Yeah, what did I miss? I think I missed something here. I think I missed something here. We did set up the authentication, right? Because if you notice the one I was playing last time. It says, what do you want to do? I want to try it. And then when I try to use it, it prompts me. For, it says, what kind of authentication do you want to use? Uh, I, so it's definitely something in the settings that I missed. Uh, we have security. And uh, I am a little bit surprised now because it should require authentication. Yeah, we'll talk about policies in a bit, but for now, I am surprised that even though we have authorization here, subscription required, and user authentication here, authorization here. Oh. Uh, why? Let's go back to docs. Maybe I missed something in the docs, and I'd not realize that, but uh, let's go here. Uh, enable OAuth, so select OAuth2. No, sorry. Let me just put this on the side. Uh, client registration, we've done that. Let's see the settings. Stream auth, uh, display name, we have it. Client registration, URL, it's fine. We don't need that. It seems to be a placeholder. Authorization grant types can be that. Hey, Stuart Ryder, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for the follow. Really appreciate that. We're doing API management with uh, Azure AD today. Uh, authorization endpoint, we have that. Uh, browse up registration, select endpoints, we have that one. Next, we need OAuth2 authorization endpoint, which we put there. We also put post, which we have that. Uh, OAuth2 token endpoint, we have that one as well, all configured. Uh, then uh, we don't have we have the v2 endpoints which we configured as well. We added the scope, we added the client credentials, uh, we added the redirect URI to our uh, to our app registration, and uh, yes, now they have configured that next step. Enable all of the authorization for your API. Okay, so we have that one. We've done this for. API management, the roots, we're going to show here. Ah, sorry. Oh, God, it's still activating. The other one is still activating. That's insane. Thank God we had a, a backup to work with. Otherwise, you would be hating me this morning. It would be a, us talking about API management as a, a, a theoretical uh, exercise. So let's go to our API management. Select the API you want to protect. Browse the API management. Go to APIs. OK, APIs. Good. Uh, select the, let's say, the stream API that we just configured or we just got access to. Go into settings and under security, subscription, and then security, user authorization or user OAuth2, and click save. That's the one. Old server, we selected the right one, which should be this, and save. That's super weird. Okay, let's go back to our developer portal. 
I am uh, surprised by that. Almost feels like I missed something because in the authorization for uh, API, you know, we have different APIs. We have the Echo API. Uh, if we say try it, see that this one doesn't even give us almost like the uh, the one that we configured is not activated or something. You know, the authentication that we configured is not activated. I wonder if we change it back to the portal for the Echo API, if we it will change anything. So if I say APIs, and then what about if I change this to say weather API and refresh? Refresh the whole thing and then come to the stream API and then try it. Ha! Huh. I think I missed a step somewhere, but it doesn't matter because they're both configured to work as expected and they're both pointing to the same API and the same Azure AD. So what you see here, we have no auth. I want to select auth. Ha! Ah, check that out. It already knows that we authenticate it, so it will try to prompt me to add my key. So five, three, four, nine, oh, eight. Verify that. Yes, I'm using my test tenant, as you can see up here. And I know it's grainy. God damn. I don't know why it's so grainy at the high resolution. So now I am authenticated. A subscription key, we need to provide that. And since you've already seen it, I can go back and uh, roll the keys later on. But under subscriptions, I need to show my key. Kind of doesn't scroll that far down. So hide keys. I'll grab this key. I'll come back here. See so that we are doing a, a get right. We're on the, oh, I don't want to delete. I don't want to delete. I want to get. Right, because we only have a get on our API. So if I do a delete, you didn't set up your green screen. I know, Frank. I'm using a Restream, and I don't think that I can configure that on Restream IO. I have not set up my OBS yet. I promise for the next stream, it will be all said and done. But thanks for joining us this morning. We're just at the point that we're testing our, um, our uh, codes to see that it's working. So here, we are doing a get because we only have a get on our API. Remember that? Uh, we are using authorization code, and I want to paste my subscription key. Uh, what happens is when you pass the request or when the request goes down, uh, it will pass the uh, subscription key as that header. So that's a custom header that we need to pass in. Uh, I need to check StreamYard. All right. Maybe I should say check StreamYard. So many tools. StreamYard, OBS Ninja, Restream, OBS. Ah, so many tools. I want something that just works. You can feel free to superimpose anything behind me if you want to just have fun later on. Please keep it as safe for work. <laughs> uh, right. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this is going to work. Send. It did work. Nice. There's one more step that we need to do because right now um, we are... Uh, authenticating against Azure AD, but we're not validating the tokens. So there's, a, there's another step that we need to go back and fix. But what we achieved so far is an API written in .NET Core published into Azure Web Apps uh, with no security, being fronted by an API management with Azure AD uh, doing the authentication. And then we're using the developer portal to test it. I do have a, a console app that uh, I published on Friday, I think, that can uh, be used to test as well. So if I go to my GitHub repo, github.com, I'm using my private. That's why it doesn't know who I am. This is not my private. So let's go GitHub. One more step. We'll go and do that. Uh, how are you, Frank, this morning? What are you up to? And under my repos, API M test client with auth. I did write a console app that uh, takes some settings. It is Frank. Yeah, it is Frank. Frank is here. And this one uh, will allow us to 
authenticate or um, go and grab the authentication using a client ID and a client ticket. Since we're using um, a console app, we don't have a user interaction there. So it needs to be uh, a client secret or a certificate. Ideally, you want to use a certificate. I do have a blog post on how to set up that certificate for your consoles. So if you go into my website, my blog, my old blog, because these days we're on dev.to, there is a, a create that calls into graph on behalf of Power App. Ah, there you go. Create a .NET Core app daemon that uses certificates. So I will put a link here if you want to see how you use a certificate with uh, MSAL to call into Azure AD. There you go. And uh, with this code, you can also run the client. So that's a client. You just need to add two settings. Uh, if I take you to the settings page, there is uh, an app settings file that expects either, well, in this instance, I'm using a client secret. So boo, boo, Chris, you don't preach what you talk or you don't, you don't do what you preach, right? So there's a client secret. You can add it as a .NET secret and uh, .NET user secret add and then add it so you don't have to compromise your source code. And then the API M key needs to match the API key that we have here. So you need to provide at least one subscription key that is valid for your APIs. And with that, you can run the application. Uh, obviously, you need to change the endpoint. Right now, I'm using my own endpoints here. But uh, once you acquire your token, which this is what it's doing, gets, it gets the access token, creates the client credential uh, auth provider, and it gets the access token, which puts it into a local static uh, property. And then we make a request. And <clears throat> in the request, all we do is uh, create a new HTTP client, set up the authorization headers. We also set up a custom header for that o OCP APIM subscription key which it grabs from the uh, configuration file. And then we pass the URI. This can be any URI you want, as long as it matches your uh, configuration inside API management. Now, 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 let's go back. We have one more step to do. Successfully call the API. We've done that and we can prove that it's working, which is great. Configure JWT validation policy to pre-authorize requests. So at this point, the user tries to make a call from the developer console. The user is prompted to sign in, which we saw that, right? I got prompted. It gets the access token, and then it includes the token into the API request. But it does not protect you from passing any random token, right? So it says, what if someone calls your API without a token or with an invalid token? Mm. Um, for example, you can call without the authorization header, or you can pass any random noise into the authorization header and it might work. So we need to use the validate JWT policy to pre-authorize the request in the API management. Uh, the following policy into the inbound policy section. Let's go and do that. Uh, okay, all right, we need to change a few things here. Mm -hmm. We need to do that. So what this one will do is we'll pre-authorize or validate the token as it comes in. The couple of things that we need to change is the uh, Azure AD tenant. We can pass the uh, either the well-known name or the, uh, I think you can pass the uh, tenant ID as well. And down here, you need to have the application ID of the backend API. Oh, sorry, the backend app registration. So let's grab that one. Let's put into, oh, let's do a new file. I mean, we could name it policy.json, right? Uh, let's change the Azure AD tenant. And to find that information, we need to go into here. In the, oh, that's the, yeah, sorry, okay. Uh, so let's guess we need to go to the back end uh, endpoints. I don't think that would give us the right endpoint. I don't want that. I want to be in the overview, overview, and the tenant name is there. Well, we can use the tenant ID as I said, but let's let's use that one for now, see if that works, and then we can go and change it. If 
fact. We can always go and check. In the app registration endpoints. That's the one. She remember how I said you can also use the uh, tent ID? Let's use that one. And I think that that's, that matches the URL, right? So login Microsoft, uh, well-known endpoint, and then open ID configuration. Let's make sure that this is the same. It is the same. So uh, you can find it here as well. Uh, let's go back to our, no, 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 different window. Oh, it's actually here in VS Code. Apologies for that. But both should work. But so let's add the tent ID. And then down here, we need the application ID of the backend API. I already have that stored in my notepad. I'm going to copy that and put it here. And again, you can find your client ID from the Azure AD tenant. So uh, if you go into Azure AD, I can go back into my app registrations, close this one down, and I can go into my the one I created today. The backend, it's EDC, which is the one I copied across. So we can copy that one now. And then following the instructions, we need to go to our API M, put it here, go into our API itself. Here's my API, APIs. And then here in our CM Stream API, we need to create a, an inbound processing policy at the base, right? Set backend server, add policy. Ooh, let me see what that, this one does. I haven't been here in a while. I wish the zoom in did not mess things up so badly. Local storage in. Oh, validate JWT. There you go. It's already there. Oh, I wonder if I can discard this one. Inbound. No, discard. I want to do add policy and then I want to say uh, other policies discard. No, it doesn't let me do that. Hey, I need to take a very, very quick break. How the hell do I take break on Restream now? That's weird. Ah, I haven't done breaks on Restream. Can you do a breaks? I don't think you can do breaks. Fine. I will battle through this. Let's see. We might have to go manual, I suppose. So we might need to header name, authorized, validate our audience, add open ID URL, request claims, failed authentication. So is there a way to edit the JSON here? Hmm. Learn more about validate. Is there a way to mess with the JSON? Because it will be easier to just paste the JSON now, right? Policies. Ah, oh, there you go. There you go. How badly can I break it? Inbound. Set backend. Okay. And then what? Do I just paste this here? Validate JWT. And then that should work. Let me get a thing. I suppose so, right? We can, uh, we can easily find out. Hey, if the app is running in a deployment slot, do I need to create another AD app registration for it? No, nope, you don't need to. You totally don't need to. Uh, they can all use the same app registration uh, un unless you want to test something different. But um, they can all use the same app registration. Um, like you can have a mobile app and, uh, and a web app and a console app all using the same app registration for the front end. and. Uh, Ideally, you don't want to do that. You want to separate them. But if it's just a web app and you have two different instances, one running on the main slot and the other one running on the uh, on the deployment slot, 
it's absolutely fine. It will work out of the box. You don't have to worry about that. And it's fine. Unrelated questions are also good. I think that's all we need to do for the inbound one. I wonder how badly we'll break things. So we have the CM stream. We have the policies here for the inbound. You see, we have the validate JWT token, have the, the setting up the backend. So uh, let's see what else the docs say. Do we need to do anything else there or are we done with that setup? Ah, there you go. That's all we need to do. So technically now, uh, if I call it again from the developer portal, it will just work. Uh, yeah, we're here. So here, let's do a refresh. And we're on the CM stream. We're going to do a get, we're going to try it. We're going to say I want auth. You remember my credentials, so don't have to do sign in, that's awesome. And I need the subscription key, which I definitely don't remember. I need to go back and get it. Please somebody ping me after the show to remind me to roll the keys or I will do it as we, uh, as we come off the stream in a few minutes. But uh, let's see, we are in the API there. We need to go and grab the, the keys from the subscription again, again and again. I'm just gonna take it aside. Sorry, no doxing. So hide keys. I'm going to copy the key, which I think it's going to be there anyway. So screw it, I will need to roll it. Uh, there, we got the bearer authorization. And now, I'll oh, check this out. Push, paste the key there. Is it gonna work? Oh, unauthorized access. Token is missing or is invalid. That's interesting. Now this is coming from the inbound, uh, from the inbound validation, right? Token validation. So why is it not liking it? It says unauthorized. But why? Why would it be unauthorized? So it's the application ID of the backend. That's what we did. And there. Uh, this open ID configuration response to V1 endpoint for the V2 endpoint, use the following URL. Ah, uh, you know what? Maybe I just use the, read the, read the instructions, Chris. So down here, let's see here, what do we need to do? We were in the APIs. Yes, in the APIs again, further up. And then in here under CM stream, we have our I hate the fact that I'm zooming in, it means that it breaks everything. So here, there you go. We have the we need to change that to be the one that the docs say that we need to use. Okay, so let's say maybe that was it. Maybe that's all we needed to. Hey, thanks for following SBLU nineteen seventy seven. Really appreciate the uh, this morning uh, coming and following us and watching what we're doing. So with that information, I don't think we need to save anything. That's all done. Let's go back to the developer portal and test it. I will refresh for good measure. We're in the get, we'll do a try. Oh, I, need to, I need to paste that key somewhere, damn it. Keep on forgetting. I will be regenerating both primary and secondary keys, by the way, after the show, because I've definitely doxed myself quite a bit. But um, it's the way to, uh, to show you how it's done, right? So we have that. We need auth authorization code. Uh, it did flash a little bit and then it came back. So that means that we are authenticating and we have the bearer token and down here you can see the authorization header. So let's see. What did we do wrong? I get, yeah, one node works too. What are we doing wrong? It says access token is missing or invalid. No, it's not missing. It is there. So it is invalid, but why is it invalid? I have nine minutes. Can we fix it in nine minutes? Uh, 
So jwt.ms, let's go and check our token and see what we see. Because I'm curious to see what's happening now. Uh, invalid preferred, access as user, we have the right scope. The audience is our, what is the audience? Six PC, where's that coming from? Oh, is this because, no, it should be fine. So that's from the, uh, so this is this does not match the latest one because remember the latest one did not, did not. What I'm saying is that as I was playing around, we were unable to set the right auth to, um, to our API. So our API right now for the CM stream is using the settings. It's using the, um, It's using the weather API auth, which is not the one that we configured this morning, because this one, for some reason, doesn't get um, doesn't get set correctly. Now I'm curious, why is our CM stream in this design? Why does it not like our settings? Oh, I think I know why. It's because we're using their own. Uh, we're using the wrong um, app registration. Because remember, we're using the different auth that I set up in the past. So that's the, the different auth that we didn't set up this morning. And that was set against two different uh, app registrations. And for that reason, the audience does not match the right audience that we have configured here. So this one needs to change because if I go back to there, it's six uh, BC, whereas here we have EDC, easy to fix. So all we need to do is go back into the app registration, uh, go here, find the API uh, app, so 6DCCE, copy that. I mean, I could have copied it from the, from the actual token, right? But uh, copy that and then go back to our API management. So many windows I'm getting lost here save that and now i think it's going to work hey thanks for following ancient coder really appreciate uh joining and tuning in this morning we're just at the point that we're uh configuring the token validation for api management so we have authentication working we just need to do the token validation and with our rule uh we should all be good let's see back to the developer portal before I do that, uh, I need, damn it, I, I lost it again. So here, I'm going to paste it somewhere because I'm getting fed up now. Ah, there you go, I'll use that one. I'm pasting it into my nasty OneNote or uh, Notepad. I've been using Notepad this morning, so apologies. Where's my developer portal? Is it here? It is here, okay, good. F5, this one, uh, brand new request. Let's try that, auth, we want authorization code. So remember us, it's good. Pasting the subscription key. And now, send. Send. <gasps> what? Right. Uh, we are done. Uh, it is working in twin. It is working definitely end to end. So what we have here is an API, which we deployed to Azure App Services. Let's go and see that. We have our, what are the components? We have our, uh, which one did we deploy? App Services, then we have the CM Stream API. That is just a dumb API that does not have any authentication. And we wanted to protect this API using API management. So rather than me writing any code to go and change the existing API to do the token validation, we're using API M in the front as a proxy to our API to, to secure it. And then we went into the API management portal. Uh, we're using uh, the CM demo API M. 
because our uh, the one that we spun up this morning took forever to deploy. So we did that. Uh, in the APIs, we added our uh, new API, the system API, which is the one we deployed to Azure App Services. And from there, we configured authentication, which for some, which, uh, for some reason did not. Let's see, is there this one. So I wonder what the difference between this one and the other one is. Did I, I think I misconfigured something here. And for that reason, it thinks that it's not active or whatever. Um, because they should be exactly the same. There, there. Client ID, client ID, client secret, client secret. They should be the same. They should be the same. I don't know what's changed. Seeing to myself now. Uh, they are the same. I like the only thing different is the description. Uh, and in the API itself, in the API definition, we decided to use the authentication. And to, in order to do that, you go into the settings and down here, uh, you say, I want to use authentication. All of two. Now, if I use stream auth, for some reason, it just doesn't like it. So if I go back to the developer portal, that's something I need to look into, like why is it inconsistent when they're both configured exactly the same way? I wonder if it is because uh, they're both point the same thing, although I would expect that that shouldn't matter. And then if I open the developer portal, which is where we uh, have a, a playground to work with, um, let me just control the five, this one. We come here and if I try it, see, there's no authorization for some very weird reason. It just doesn't show up. But if I go back to my API management and change the, that to be the weather API auth, which was the one I configured before, using the exact same steps that I used before, and save. Then if I go back to my developer portal and uh, do a try, you notice that now I'm, I'm prompted, prompted for the authorization here. So we've done that, we authorized, we get the token, uh, we add it to the headers, and then we can call our API. It's not gonna call it because I'm missing the subscription key. Do I have the subscription key? Perfect. Is that there? There you go. So uh, it is working. Our API is protected using API management and Azure AD. We found two things that are not working today. One is the brand new uh, configuration for auth that we did this morning. Uh, even though we followed the exact same steps, it does not seem to light up. And the second one is if I come here, can I sign up from somewhere? I think there's a close this one. If I sign out and if I try to sign in back in again, if I try to sign in with uh, my Azure Active Directory, you can also enable Azure Active Directory for the developer portal. This is the portal that you can come and play around with APIs for your API management. Uh, this does not work. So I have two follow-ups to do this week with the API management team and uh, work it out. But uh, I hope that you found something useful. Um, let me know if you want anything else for us to cover as part of the, the streams. I'll be doing more impromptu streams like that with proper setup, not with uh, the stupid green screen behind me. Uh, thanks everyone for joining this morning. Thanks for the aid from, uh, from Fritz. And uh, I appreciate that. We'll put everything on YouTube. So it will be available for you later this week. And I will put a blog post together to show you how to do it end to end. Thanks, uh, thanks everyone for the kind comments and for the support. This was the first one I did solo. So it was uh, fun to uh, see how it would go. And uh, stay tuned because we have a super exciting week. Tomorrow at 8 a.m. Pacific time in the morning, we're actually doing Terraform uh, with uh, uh, Azure and I think Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions. We haven't decided yet. We have somebody from the Go team that uh, and the Terraform team uh, from Microsoft coming on to, uh, ooh, thanks for reminding me, I need to raid somebody. Um, yeah, so we'll have somebody from the, the uh, Terraform 
team at Microsoft, but also does go uh, to join us uh, for um, for the morning. And then I don't know if we're doing anything else. Uh, so I think then we have uh, the T Tesla, Tulsa, 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 Tulsa um user group on thursday you can uh, come and join us there i'll be there with jp to talk about microsoft identity and then on friday we have some uh, more exciting guests coming up i need to check the calendar because we have so many people uh and with that i'm going to raid uh, michael crumb who is also live uh, right now and uh, he's also doing something interesting uh, usually he does stuff with security so if you want to stick around i appreciate everyone for coming and i will see you all this week Thanks, everyone.